Okay, hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you can hear me. Join me out today on a ride to bring you the review of the nine Velo carbon wheels. I've been riding for about three to four months and actually got these wheels at the back end of last year. But as you know, I like to test things for at least three months during the winter and even longer in the summer. In the winter, you can get away, well, I think I can get away with doing quicker reviews because of kind of the accelerated test conditions of the winter weather. You know I don't shield crap. If I think it's crap, I'll say it's crap. But now you haven't heard from me for a while. I've now taken on the, the role of product tester for a certain brand, which has been really cool. And thanks to all you guys uh, for making that happen. It did come about through them watching me on YouTube and getting involved with the engineering side of stuff. So that's keeping me really busy at the moment. And I'm trying to fit in many more hours of riding than I'm used to per week in and around work and in and around everything else. And I'm out today to do the review of the nine Velo carbon wheels that come from Xiamen in China. Of course, the carbon wheel capital of the world. And you may not have heard of nine Velo, but I've been speaking to the same person from this company and their previous company for about 12 years. And they've been making rims, OEM and for themselves for about 12 years. And I've built wheels using their rims before. But now they, they've branched out They've got their own brand and they've integrated their own hub now. So instead of buying off the shelf hubs like Extra Light, DT Swift, they've now integrated their own hub design with their wheel set so they can offer the wheel set at a lower price. You know, I don't like to put up a review straight away. So I've been testing for about four months now alongside other wheel tests and sort of chopping and changing on the bike. But I finally finished the aero testing, the spoke balance and tension test and all the other tests, the stiffness test, that's all done. So the price of these wheel set is very competitive. It's 799 USD, which is a lot cheaper than what they could offer with you know, an extra, extra light or a DT Swiss hub or something. And this is a mid-tier wheel set. There's a slightly lower tier wheel set, the cheaper spokes, Saturn race spokes. And there's a higher tier carbon spokes version with a slightly different hub system. I think that hub system is utilizing the kind of DT Swiss Star Ratchet style pulls, which have now gone out of pattern protection. So a lot of people are copying that now. Um, but the rim I'm using is a 55 mil deep, 21 mil internal hooked, 28 mil external. So pretty much bang on the money, middle of the road now. Semi-wide aero design. Uh, it's symmetric, it's not an asymmetric profile, and these wheels use CX Ray spokes, which, as you know, are my favourite. Now, the lower end wheel set is using the Sapin Ray spoke, which is a slightly thicker gauge spoke, which should make for a slightly stiffer wheel. So, I'm glad I've got the, the CX Rays. I think they're quite soft as a spoke goes. You know, the spring, the spring constant of a CX Ray is quite low. And uh, unless I'm riding in Mallorca or in Spain somewhere, the carbon wheels are great for a TT, but for every day hacking about on really rough roads in the UK, they're not, they're not the best. Now, ironically, this road is very smooth and I've chosen a smooth road to keep this camera from vibrating to do this voiceover, but normally there's potholes everywhere, ruts, cracks in the road, damage from ice, salt. So a softer wheel is, is my go-to for winter and just general riding. All the tests completed on these, aero, spoke balance test, tension test, and the outer plane stiffness test, that's all done. So I'll present that data. Now, like I said, they've gone with their own design of hub. It's a pretty neat design. It's pretty inconspicuous, to be honest. I quite like the design, it's not very fussy. It looks very similar to a DT240 body with straight pull spokes. Now they do stress they've got semi-decent bearings in these hubs and they've gone for enduro bearings, which are nice to see at this price point. Enduro aren't the best, but they're not the worst. But one thing that is really a bugbear in mind when it comes to these hubs is they never put enough grease in them from factory. So you've got hardly any labyrinth seal on these end caps, but it would just be nice to get that flange working as a more of a running seal if it had a bit of extra assembly grease just around the end cap to protect the bearing from the weather. See, the bearing stance on this front hub is very wide, which gives it a lot of 
out of plane stiffness, makes the wheel nice and stiff. But after that end cap and the shield of the bearing, there's really not much protection there. So it'd just be nice to put a bit more grease in there. I've actually added some more of my own grease before I even use them, which, you know, some say it's not a fair test, but if I didn't, I'm not sure they would last very long at all, to be honest. So pull the end caps off, add some more grease. Note to the manufacturer, because you will be watching this review because you asked me to do it. And I've said this to you before, please add grease under the end caps. Costs you nothing, but it's gonna stop your bad reviews on weight, weight wean tards about the bearings growing graunchy after three months of riding in the winter. So add a bit more grease, please. It just makes the whole assembly a lot nicer. Because other than that, there's not much weather sealing to the hubs. Now, this is the three pool traditional pool rear hub design the cheaper wheel has gone for a six pool duckham <laughs> interestingly the cheaper option with the sap and race spokes has a six pool free hub and the carbon spoke version like i said has the kind of old dt swiss star ratchet system which is out of protection now Anyone can do that, I think. I think that's fair game to say, because um, the pattern's lapse on that. But I was a bit concerned. Three pulls doesn't seem like doesn't seem like a lot, but they are very beefy. I'm not one of those persons that gets hung up on points of engagement on a hub. And sounding like a swarm of bees, I think it's just pretty lame, to be honest. So three three pulls, as long as they're big enough, beefy enough, should be fine. Not had any problems with it putting out my peak prawn watts of 150 watts for five seconds it's uh, it's not a problem now i'm riding vittoria corsa next 32s as you've seen in other wheel reviews these tires are really slow when it comes to rolling resistance versus a more premium german tire I'm not saying their name again until they sponsor me because i plug in them way too hard but they're a good all-round training tire and they're fairly cheap puncture protection is pretty good as well. So first of all, let's take a little look at the spoke tension and balance test. As we can see here on the front wheel, most of them are within 5% of the mean, only a couple of outliers on each side. And in general, the spoke tension is really high. So that tells me that although they've designed their own hubs, they've got the geometry pretty spot on. Now looking at the rear, yes, there are a few more outliers, but to give this some context, I've only tested one other wheel set where all of the spokes have been within 5% of the mean. Don't know if you can guess what that is, but you can go and check my back catalogue to find out. The last load of results from the Ascent Polaris 42mm wheels, which were tested with DT240 hubs. Well, they were built on DT240 hubs. And we found that the non-drive side on the rear of those was actually quite low tension, even though the drive side was a much higher tension or a, a nominally uh, good tension. They are so wide out to the disc side on the rear on the DT240 that the spoke tensions remain quite low. And we can see here on this graph, the blue line, the non-drive side, so the disc side is much, much better, even though the drive side, so the non-disc side spoke tensions are more or less the same as the DT240. So I would actually go to say that this actually has better geometry than the DT240. Now, spoke tension, does it affect wheel stiffness? Not really, it shouldn't do, because that's just Hooke's law, but this topic is um, hotly debated amongst wheel builders and it's quite a contentious subject. Spoke tension shouldn't affect wheel stiffness side to side or up and down, but it will if the spoke tension is so low that the actual conditions of the nipple and the hub flange actually change. So if you get small micro movement at the hub flange and nipple, then a low spoke tension will create a less stiff wheel. But in general, it shouldn't if they're high enough that there's no movement at the nipple, it's just Hooke's Law, spoke tension doesn't affect wheel stiffness. Coming on to the wheel stiffness test, these are actually really, really good. Considering they're CX race spokes, which is quite a thin gauge, quite a, you know, a stretchy spoke. The front wheel was very, very stiff. That's helped by the wide uh, bearing stance of the front wheel and shows me that it's got very good preload tolerances. Now you've seen this graph before. This is lateral stiffness by spoke material type. No surprises here that the carbon spokes in general offer stiffer wheels. Now getting onto the aerodynamic test, this was largely done at the back end of last year with other wheels on the same day and you can see here the 9 Velo being a 55mm wheel is more or less within ballpark where you'd expect it. Although on a couple of runs the Icon Aero 35 was actually faster. That wheel like we said in the wheel review for that is exceptionally good aerodynamically for a shallow wheel because it's quite narrow and has a really really good transition with a 28mm tyre. 
It's not as fast as the D45 this wheel set, which is the Hyper, which is kind of the daddy of the aero test at the moment, but there's the D67 test coming up soon. And I haven't actually done a specific aero test video on the D45 because I filmed that review before I really got into the aero testing, but I've now uploaded the results onto this graph. So you can see the aero performance of the D45 very, very, very good. The other line on here, the purple line is the Ascent Polaris P42, which doesn't look as good as these other wheels, but in the previous video where we tested that with the wider tires and the thinner tires, there was no penalty for running a 32 mil tire on that rim. So if you wanna check out the wide tire versus thin tire video for the aerodynamics, go and check that out because that's quite interesting. We see that some rims really got penalized by using a fatter tire, and some rims like the P42 didn't get penalized by using a fatter tire. But for these tests, all on the same day, five laps on each, we were just using the 28 millimeter GP5K control tire. As you know, that's a control tire. I have to keep it exactly the same, otherwise it will skew the results with extra CRR loss. And as you can see here, for a 55 mil rim, pretty good, pretty ballpark, to be honest. Now, worth noting that the white dotted line on this graph is slightly lower down than the others. The dotted lines are the yaw conditions for each lap. We can see five laps on each wheel. That's basically 10K on each wheel. I just got slightly lower yaw on the nine velo wheels than all the other wheels. There's nothing I can do about that. I did do the testing on the same day, but I can't control the weather. I'm not God. So it is what it is. And that got me thinking, how does how does CDA actually change with your? Does it? Is it affected by your? Does the CDA regime change with your? And absolutely, yes, it does. So just a quick extra plot here for some extra nerdiness. I went and plotted a load of global data points from October to January. You can't directly compare all these data points because they're on different wheels, different days, and sometimes even using different power meters. But in general, we can see a, a little bit of a trend here. I need to fill this with more data points, but I've just plotted all the data points between October and January on the aerodynamic test protocol. And you can see there is kind of a trend line, a rough trend line here between um, your angle, which is on the x-axis, and, and apparent CDA, which is on the, the vertical axis, on the y-axis. And you can see here there's maybe an inflection point around six degrees of your, which gives a lower CDA for most wheels. I don't know. Is there anything in this? I need to plot a lot more data, do some more data analysis to kind of test this theory, but yes, CDA does change with your, which is why we try and do all the testing on the same day, back to back, um, AB, AB kind of fashion, that kind of thing. Anyway, going back to the wheel specifically, these are the aero watts at certain speeds. We can see in this table here, the speeds along the top and the aero watts of all the different wheels. Pretty good for a 55 millimeter wheel set. Not the best, I would say, because the, the front wheel of the Hyper is actually shallower than this, but this is quite a wide rim. And yeah, it does have more spokes than the Hyper. So you kind of expect that. The white dotted line here signifies the test speed, which is around 35 and a half kilometers an hour. And you may think, before you get really kind of hung up on these aerodynamic differences between wheels, that there are huge differences between wheels. There really aren't. And to signify that, I've plotted an extra CRR loss of using a slow tire. So, so all these lines are using a GP5K28. And if we redo the test at 35 k's an hour on a slow tire, this is the extra CRR, CRR loss. You're nearly at 230 watts versus 210 for the others. So uh, I've said this before in other videos, first things first, get a fast tire if you really care about speed. Disc alignment, I've gone onto this about other hubs in other videos. Um, it is quite annoying if you're using different wheel sets to have inconsistent disc alignment. Um, yeah, so they've got that spot on. And that is you know, just the machining tolerance on the disc mounting interface and also the preload tolerances of the bearings are spot on too. Redundancy, I've gone into this before, and you can see, funnily enough, that these hubs actually look very similar to the DT240. The shell is almost the same. Redundancy just means, are you going to die uh, through catastrophic detensioning or delacing of the hubs? No, these do have redundancy because they have fully enclosed spoke holes. Some of the really lightweight straight pull side entry hubs that we see on the market don't have any redundancy. So if you get one or two spokes detensioning, and the others detention, they can all just pop out to the side and you end up on the floor. I hope you enjoyed that little review of nine velo i do have a discount code i'll leave it here on the screen and in the description below i think they're a decent product so i'm happy to put my name to it you know i don't shield crap if i think it's crap i'll say it's crap and i've tested these properly and put the time in next up on the wheel review front will be the somewhat more premium wind space hyper d67s those are the deepest wind space hypers and we'll go deep dive on the aero on those because, boy, that's a very racy wheel set. Anyway, cheers, and I'll see you in the next one.